In this video we're going to demonstrate the year-end or month-end cloning process for our finish line due date system. Finish line keeps track of detailed tasks and forms and each year or each month, whatever your preference would be, uh, the information is copied to the next period. So you always maintain a history of the work from the prior year. You can refer to notes. Also you can see what the budget was in the prior year and when when the work was completed. So that kind of detailed tracking history it's beneficial to have. We recommend you keep a few years and periodically purge that information when it, when it gets older than three or four years. But at any rate in this sample here we have uh, some 2011 due date information. This is, uh, let's take a look on the data sheet. You can see monthly bookkeeping for 2011. That's a task. Okay, we have some quarterly tasks, uh, quarterly financial statements that were prepared, more monthly books. Okay, looks like we have some 2011 1040 uh, and 2010. Now, we're using the form year convention with the 1040s and what that means is that uh, the U in the US the 2010 form year is due in 2011 so it just so happens in this example that our 2010 forms for 1040s are going to fall in the same due date year that most of the other tasks for 2011 fall in uh, you're going to see how we resolve that in the cloning situation in just a moment. I also want to mention the 2010 forms have already been cloned. So these 2011 forms are actually copies of the previous year's activity. Let's move on down. Uh, and we also have a payroll that we're going to clone. In total on the bottom left in the navigation bar we can see we have 120 records. Four of those have already been cloned. Those 2011 forms are clones of the 2010. So we actually have 116 records that we're going to clone to the next period. Now if you go to Setup Utilities and click Due Date Setup and Utilities, it's going to open up this screen. And the default is a new uh, default from prior versions. We're going to clone based on a default due date range. So. We, we like to keep a certain number of tasks always in the buffer. And so we're cloning over a period of 18 months here. From January 1st, it says enter a due date range from the prior period to clone from. So we're going to choose January 1st, 2011 through 63012. Now anything in that date range, original due date range, that has not previously been cloned, will be cloned, meaning that another copy will be made for the succeeding due date or form year. Due date is the overall term, due date year, but in, in the sense of the US, the form year rule simply means that a form, the 2010 tax return, for example, is going to be due in 2011. So anything with the original due date range in this 18 month period is going to be cloned at this point. It's a two-step process. You First you click here to begin the cloning procedure once you've reviewed your options. That brings you to a temporary table that's, that basically allows you to review what's going to be cloned, print a copy of it. When you're satisfied, you follow up by finalizing those results. So the first step is a temporary result. And I might also mention that even if you finalize your clone with the new version 10, it's pretty simple to go and grab a date range of items and remove them from your database. So if you have supervisor permissions, you finalized your clone and you're not satisfied with the result, I'm going to show you in just a minute how you can undo that even if you have finalized it. Let's review the cloning options. On the right side, some basic task level options. These are self-explanatory. Uh, one or two are worth discussing in a little detail. Uh, if you want, if you have some tasks that do not automatically compute start dates, and over here on the master tasks screen, you'll see there is an option right here to compute start dates. So, for example, the 1120 does not automatically compute start dates. Many firms want to actually enter the start date when it becomes clear that the work's coming in rather than target a start date. So, going back to cloning, 
Okay. If you would if you would like those manually set dates to be copied uh, from from last year to next year and incremented by one year, maybe that's always the time that this particular client brings his or her information in. You can check that box. Uh, cloning tasks for specified dates in many cases I don't think would be necessary. A specified date task comes up when something arises like an IRS audit or an IRS notice and you want to uh, stipulate the due date for that and when it needs to be performed. If it's not something that arises uh, you can generally hand handle it as an annual task that's due in a particular month or a form-based task that's due in a particular month. So you have to ask yourself a question. If it does recur every year, regardless of when it recurs in the year, uh, you probably ought to set it up as something other than a specified date. Nevertheless, if you have specified dates for a number of tasks that do recur, you can clone them and you have to opt into that by checking that box. These other options here uh, are self-explanatory except for the engagement feature. What what this uh, question asks is if you have an engagement that's based on a year, uh, the 2011 audit engagements, do you want to create new engagements for 2012 automatically and assign those engagements to tasks where they have been assigned in the previous year? You have to check that box if you want to do that. Finally, if you're using our workflow methodology and you want to copy the tasks and the subtasks as they were last year. Maybe you have a master task uh, for a year-end work that involves 12 steps, but for some clients only nine of the 12 steps are implemented. Well, choosing the second option here actually copies the steps based upon the way you actually implemented them in the prior year, including the uh, budget tracking information and the detailed comments. Choosing the other option comp, uh, clones the main task but sets it up based upon the user defined or the status level template as it is in its default state. So in its default state for example the audit user defined tasks or subtasks have looks like eight steps here. Uh, if you use this first option it's going to create a 2012 task with all eight steps whereas if in the previous year you only used six of those eight steps choosing the second option okay would copy those six steps instead of creating the eight so if you're doing a lot of trimming or customizing of the of the master user defined templates uh, you probably would want to use the second option rather than the first. If everybody always has the same eight steps, except with a few exceptions, you might want to consider using the second option here. Okay? I'm going to use the second option. I'm going to copy the detail tracking budget from last year to this year, and I'm also going to copy the detail comments. By not checking anything or selecting anything in the list, I'm telling the list that I want to copy everything, all the tasks and forms. Clicking the red button on the bottom right institutes a new cloning procedure. I get a message about how many items are going to be cloned, cloned for a particular date range. Uh, if you don't have a billing partner assigned to a client, it will not clone. Now this is the temporary table I mentioned and you'll notice that we have 116 items. The previous 1040s from 2010 due date year although they fell within the date range that you can see up here January 1st 2011 through June 30th 2012 they had already been cloned now those 2011 items happened to fall due in April of 2012 so they are actually being cloned in this particular example Okay, and they're right up here, the first four items. So we have 116 items, that, that's correct, because we had 120 in total in our database, four of which had already been cloned, the 2011 1040s. And that's what's meant by clone duplication protection. When an item is cloned, it carries its unique ID forward to the clone task or form. That ID can't be duplicated twice. So if you want to distribute a, a report to partners, click that button. It will distribute a printed report of all the items that have been or are about to be cloned.
If you want to filter for a particular billing partner and review those items in here, you can also uncheck the OK box uh, and that will prevent that particular item from being cloned. Uh, for that matter, you can just delete an item from this temporary table. Now I'm going to go ahead and finalize this cloning process. In our case, it's not going to take long at all. The cloning is complete. I'm going to go back to Manage Edit Deadlines. I'm going to refilter this screen. You can see we've gone from 120 items to 236. And that is the full set of everything from the previous year and the new 2012 items that we just created. The important thing to remember about cloning is to uh, follow a certain procedure and to stick with it. So if you're an annual accounting firm, for example, and you use this 18-month cloning period, uh, each year clone at the same time and use the same date period. We're using 18 months here because in December, this firm, before it clones, wants to have some idea of what's coming up for the next six months. Now there, was, there is one exception to that. In your very first year of using the finish line due date system, you'll notice that certain items are annual. When you create payroll items, it creates 52, 53, or 54 weeks of payroll items. When you create a monthly uh, set of items, it creates 12. Similarly, four quarters. Well, if you're trying to create a or front load six months beyond the year of information, when you do your first 18-month clone in this screen here, it's, it's only going to have 12 months worth of payroll or, or 12 months worth of bank reconciliations weeks of payroll. So when it does the clone, even though there is an additional six months beyond December 2011 there, it won't have anything to clone from. So it will not actually create the items for that additional six months. What you need to do in your first year is to do the clone one more time if you always want a consistent additional six months worth of items uh, beyond the year end. Now, now this doesn't apply to everybody, but what I'm going to do now is do the clone one more time. Okay, it's adding another 49 items. Those 49 items represent the items in the first six months of 2013 that didn't get cloned on the first pass because we didn't have 18 months worth of the first year's bank recs or the first year's payroll. This creates a full set of 18 months. So now I'm going to copy this in, jump back to the Manage Edit Deadline screen, press F5 to refresh, and I now have 285 items. If I sort over here by um, period end, Okay, seeing I'm going all the way to June 2013 now. But it was necessary just in the very first cloning uh, occasion to clone twice. You don't have to be concerned about duplication, so there's no reason not to do that if you always want to be in the situation where you have a full six months of information beyond, uh, you know, to look at and project due dates. What if you went from a yearly cloning procedure to a six-month procedure. Would, uh, would it create problems? Well, your first uh, clone would create uh, a different set of results, but it wouldn't duplicate. It would just take uh, several cloning periods in order to normalize the procedure, but you don't have to be concerned about duplications. That's not going to happen in this scenario. Uh, let's go back to the Manage Edit Deadline screen before our second clone and after the first clone, of 236 tasks, 120 in the first period and then 116 that were cloned. Clearing the filters and choosing the 2012 year because I cloned some 2011 items to 2012 and set my filters. Those are the 116 items that were just created as a result of that cloning process. Okay, I'm going to remove them by selecting them all, holding down my left button, dragging over that record selector on the data sheet, and now I'm pressing the, de the delete key. And in our small database, it doesn't take very long 
to clear out 120 items. Now I'm back to where I just started. So you can see that uh, it's pretty easy to undo a clone even if it's been finalized. Now in that particular situation, I didn't have overlapping uh, form years. I Actually, everything that I cloned was from the 2011 year, so it was fairly simple to pick a year. In other cases, you might have to set a couple of filters. And of course, this scenario really shouldn't occur, but the point of demonstrating this is just to show you that cloning is not a procedure that you need to be, uh, you need to be careful with it. You need to set up norms. I'll clone every month. I'll clone once a year. I'll clone once a quarter. Uh, don't don't change back and forth between quarterly and monthly cloning. So set up a procedure for an accounting firm. Uh, cloning every quarter might be adequate, uh, or cloning once a year with an 18-month overlapping period might even be better because that way in November you'll still be able to project your workload for the next six months. Now the one other method to clone uh, used for cloning, which I'll mention briefly, is to clone using the due date year. This used to be the only way to clone and it did cause some confusion because oftentimes in the due date period of for example 2011 uh, two due date years might come into play both the 2010 due date year for a 1040 form and the 2011 due date year for a, for a task so this this other methodology sometimes required separate cloning for both forms and tasks so you can see here that if you're using the due date year you've got to for clone your forms separately from your tasks. So if I pick the uh, 2011 1040s, there's a slight difference here. It says select the year to clone to, the 2012 year. In the other example, it, it said a date range to clone from. I'm going to leave the options on the right the same. I should get four items, and I do. These are my four items from the 2011 year. Okay, they're going to create four 2012 forms. So I would finalize that by clicking copy. And then you'd go over to your tasks. And you would similarly either select one or two or leave them blank for all. And in this case, the 2011 tasks will be copied to 2012. and there's 110 tasks in there. Now uh, the other couple of items that add up to the the number that we were dealing with before of 116 have to do with these 1120s and I, I wanted to show you how you could pick one form and just clone that one form although in most cases I think you should clone everything. Uh, so the importance in cloning is establishing a methodology I recommend that you use the due date range as your primary methodology if you're a version 9 and prior user you may want to stay with the form your method but this new method is very flexible and it does allow you to have some forward-looking due dates so using this 18 month period I'm actually going to have at the end of uh, next year when I'm ready to clone I'll still have some tasks and forms ahead of me so I can be projecting in the fourth quarter without running out of things in my due date system to look at uh, whether you should clone quarterly or annually is is up to you. Uh, some firms uh, might want to clone every month and base that cloning on a rolling 12-month period so that you always have at least 12 months of forward-looking information. What I would encourage you to do is experiment a little bit with this. Uh, you get a temporary table to look at to see what you're getting and as I showed you you can undo your cloning results by using the form filters and task filters on the other screen. Alright so that's an introduction to cloning also press your F1 key when you're doing your cloning there's some very good help let me see if I can pull up the help for you under cloning and it covers what we did today both methodologies either cloning from a date range or the older method using the form or due date year, the temporary table, and then finalizing your results. So good luck with that. If you have any further questions, please call our support department for assistance.